The Adelaide Gold, located in South Australia, is one of the state's oldest and most significant historical sites. The Gold was constructed between 1841 and 1848 and was designed to accommodate the growing population of convicts in the colony. It operated constantly from 1841 until its closure in 1988. That's 147 years making it one of the longest running prisons in Australia. The goal is now a popular tourist attraction. You can also do nighttime ghost tours and from time to time they do historical reenactments. So let's have a look around. Haven't even started and got it wrong already. Better go this way. Probably one of the first stops for a new prisoner would be the medical section. I would think that probably medical care wouldn't be of the highest standard here. To me it looks like it's probably more like, take two pills and don't bother calling me in the morning unless you're dead. where you end up after breakfast. This must be the torture area. As we enter the first of the yards, you might notice all the bricks on top of the wall. Well, it turns out they're only loosely stacked up there. The idea was if somebody tried to go over the wall, they would knock over the bricks and alert the guards. Early version of an alarm system. However, you would have thought that would have made a great weapon. This building was built between 1858 and 1862 and is the only three-storey building in the jail. It was built to house the female prisoners in single cells. As time moved on, if nothing else, at least the bedding improved, maybe. The contemplation cell was where you could try to pray your sins away and maybe be reformed. Back in the day, at least for a woman, things may have been better in here than it was outside in the free world. This building used to have back-to-back -back cells. It was later converted into a workroom and laundry. A volunteer was wandering through the place when he fell through some rotting floorboards and to his surprise discovered another level which looked like the floor of a prior building. During an archaeological dig in 2007, they uncovered some early brickwork and artefacts. Some of the stuff found were razor blades, bits of pottery, sewing needles and other bits and pieces, which are now on display. The Rose Garden was started in 1932 by a female prisoner whose behaviour was unmanageable. The original garden was much bigger but was reduced when a new building went in in 1960. There are a few rose bushes still here from the original plants. The male prisoners took over caring for the garden in 1969. This section had the clothing store and induction centre. 
and down the bottom the men's education centre with cells on the right. The prison was designed around the style of a prison in the UK. With its semicircular design, the guards could have an uninterrupted view of all the yards from the one post. The sad news for the guards was that they were locked in there for 12 hours and couldn't come out. Toilet times were conducted in the tower, and with no walls, the prisoners could always tell when a guard was sitting on the loo. While Yard 4 might have had the canteen in it, I'm guessing it was a yard that you never really wanted to be in. So these cells here were for those that were condemned. You know, the ones that were... <coughs> a prisoner might get the chance to buy some luxuries from the canteen. In fact, it looks like they had quite a lot of stuff they could actually choose from. Prisoners could earn money from the work they did in the prison, then come here and actually buy something they want. I'm actually quite surprised at the variety that was available to them. The next section takes us for a walk through history with pictures and plans of how the prison changed over the years. As time went on, it became necessary to start putting two prisoners in one room. If you were in the exercise yard and you had to go to the loo, there was no privacy. These rooms along here are listed as escape cells. I'm guessing you can pay to get locked up and you have to try and get out again. Each cell has a different name on the door. I'd have no chance in those escape rooms if this board has anything to go by. This is where you can try your luck. I've got a dud key. There was a very good display of some artefacts from the prison days of things that were used. Some people would pay a lot of money these days to get done over by one of these whips. Just saying. Inevitably, some people saw their end in this prison, 
and are still here. That's coming shortly. These cells were different. These were for the remand prisoners. That's a prisoner who, for whatever reason, are being held over in jail until their sentencing. And if convicted, they'd then be moved over into the general prison where we've just been through. Can you imagine how this would have sounded to the new inmate? ghosts? I think there might be one in here. Soon. Soon my little friends. Yes. yes. Soon. For months I've been carefully collecting you. Yes. You my little friends. <laughs> fruit from the fruit cakes. There you go. There you go. And my pocket for safekeeping. <laughs> now the orange. The last of it. Yes. Oh yes. Vegemite. Vegemite. Vegemite is under the pillow. All of the rest of the things in the pillow, under the bed, in the mattress. If anyone was to find out, if anyone was to tell the screws, all that went for nothing. Months of collecting with anticipation, and then for a few short hours I'll be free. This aching emptiness will be gone. This loneliness vanish, at least for a time. Until the brew wears up. How are any of us supposed to put up with this place? These people? These screws? This is like no man's land. An easy target if you get caught in here. If you made it over one wall, you still had to get over the second and taller wall. The white square on the wall was the mugshot wall, where new prisoners would get their photo taken. Sixty-six people met their maker in the jail, but only about 17 of them would have seen their last day walking along this path, and only four were hung in the hanging tower which was built in 1953. There were two rooms, one for the condemned prisoner who would spend his last two hours with a priest and the other one where the executioner would pull the handle. Along this section through here, anybody that was hung in there was buried in the ground along here. That way they would never ever leave prison. The writings on the wall were the number of the person that was hung, their initials and the date they died. Well, this one's a little concerning. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's all good. It wasn't me. It was a John Robinson who cut the throat of his stepfather. Sorry, sorry. Oops, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Oops, sorry, sorry. Was, oops, that, was that your foot? Sorry, did, yep, yep, was that your hand? Oops, sorry, 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 sorry. Yep, oop. I'm just stepping over here. Yep, yep, yep. The one with the flowers was Elizabeth Woolcott. She was the only woman to be hung in the jail. The new building was constructed in 1878-79 and is the only building in the Adelaide Goal that was constructed by prison labour. Originally made of wood, it was later converted to the current dormitory in 1961. Up in front is the A-Wing. A gallows was installed there in 1886. A further 21 prisoners were executed from 1894 to 1950. This space can be hired out for functions. So that brings us to an end to the uh, look around the old uh, Adelaide jail. So if you like what you saw, then uh, hit the uh, thumbs up, that helps the channel out. And if you uh, want to see more of this sort of thing, then uh, hit that subscribe button down at the bottom there. So, till next time, not sure what that's going to be. Happy travels.